Welcome to section 1.3, simple random sampling. So now that we know the different types of variables, how to classify them, now we know how to set up our study if we want to do an observational study or some sort of designed experiment. Now it's time to figure out how to get people in our study. And we do that by chance. We use um, random sampling. And the reason we use random sampling is because that's the way we're going to be able to mimic the actual population the most if it's completely random. So random sampling is the process of using chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. If we don't use chance, if it's not random, then we call it a convenient sample. And if convenience is used to get the sample, the results are useless. All right, so a convenient sample is, um, we can think of it as non-random. Some other convenient samples would be self-selecting. So for instance, if you were listening to the radio and you heard about a topic and you had a very strong opinion about it and you called in to give your opinion, well, everyone calling in is giving strong opinions. So that's not really what's happening with the population. Likewise, all those Yelp um, reviews, a lot of times all those Yelp interviews are by people who've had a wonderful experience or a horrible experience. That's a self-selecting survey. Um, also, another type of convenient sample with useless results is self-serving. Self-serving. So, for instance, is someone, or Colgate, self-serving. Let's get that written down. If Colgate wanted to conduct a survey about the best tasting toothpaste, or the best cleansing toothpaste, I guess, I wouldn't trust the survey performed by Colgate because they're probably going to tilt the survey so they look great in the data. Um, likewise, some pharmaceutical companies, they self-test their own drugs, kind of the same self-serving sample. Okay, so those samples are bad. Random sampling is good. It represents the population better, and that's the point. We need random sampling from a small sample so we can make a conclusion about the population. So we want our sample to look like the population. Okay, so the types of samples that we're gonna see, the types of random samples, in this section, it's simple random sampling, SRS for short, Simple random sampling. S R S. Um, in the next section, we're going to be looking at three others stratified, sampling. Systematic sampling. And then finally, something called a cluster sample or cluster sampling. All valid types of sampling. And we determine which method to use based on the situation. Some random sampling samples are better in other situations. And we'll talk more about that in the next section. Let's look at simple random sampling. So here's our definition, a sample of size n, little n, we have some notation we're gonna use for the rest of the semester. So little n is the, is the size of the sample. Big N is the population size. So a sample of size little n from a population of size big N is obtained through simple random sampling if every possible sample of size n has an equally likely chance of occurring. Then the sample is called a simple random sample. Okay, so um, to perform a simple random sample, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we are first going to list all outcomes. 
And we'll see that, that in the next example. We're going to list all outcomes and number them. So if I wanted to do a simple random sample of our classroom, I would put all of your names on like a roster and I would label your names like 1 through 35. So we list the outcomes and number them. And that process, what we just created, is called a frame. So a frame lists all outcomes and associates a number to them. Then we randomly select a number. So we randomly select an individual using random numbers until we have the sample size we want. All right, we can get our random numbers um, from a random number table that's in the next video. We can use a random number generator. Uh, we can even pull numbers out of a hat because that's technically leaving it up to chance. And every number we pull out of it, the hat has an equally likely chance of occurring. Okay, so let's look at an example. So a student entering a doctoral program in educational psychology is required to select two courses from the list of courses provided as part of his or her program. All right, so here we, ha we have, um, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven courses. Okay, we're going to list all possible two course selections. So using our notation of ab from above, our population has seven courses in it. So big N is seven. And what's our sample size? Little n is going to be two. Okay, so um, list all possible two course selections. So I have to write big, but hopefully you can fit it on here. I'm going to be systematic <laughs> about this. So first I'm going to assume that this person chose educational psychology, 616, and I'm going to pair it pair by pair with all the remaining courses. Okay, so what that would look like is this. So I'm just going to write 616. So they take 616 and 630. 616 and 631, 616, 632, whoops, 32, 616, 645, 616, 649, 616, and 650. All right, so that's all, those are all the courses that would be paired with 616. And now we compare all the classes with 631. Order doesn't matter, so I'm still going to be systematic. I'm not going to write, whoops, excuse me, I skipped one already, 630. I'm not going to pair 630 and 616 because we already have that. So I'm just going to go down from 630. Whew. All right, let's keep going. We have 631 now. I always like these moments. This is when I, I call them Zen out moments. It's kind of relaxing because it's systematic, yet tedious at the same time. But there's nothing you can do but just work through it. Okay, 631. I'm on 632 now. I'm going to put this up a little bit. And again, we're listing all possible two course combinations. Ooh, the list is getting shorter now. That's nice. Six forty five. All right, and last one, 
I have to finally repeat my colors. We're on 649 and 650. Could be paired together. Whew. All right, so those are all the possible two course selections. And now we want to comment on the likelihood that the pair courses 630 and 645, here it is, 630 and 645, um, will be selected. So again, we're assuming that these are all equally likely. Um, so what we have to do, it's one out of how many? So how many possible two are there? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six choices and then five. The green have four options and then three, two, one. So altogether it's six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. So how many total two course selections? 21. Almost done. So part B, the likelihood of choosing 630 course uh, EPR 630 and 645, we have a 1 out of 21 shot since all pairs are equally likely. So this is the answer to part B. 1 out of 21.